<laughs> so I want to talk about this huge accomplishment of starting a wine club, uh, the gay wine club. Uh, you already spoke about your original vision going in. What is it like that now, especially through COVID? Uh, how what's affecting those changes, and have or has your mindset changed or your mission changed with that with the club since yeah. the beginning? Working at Charlie Bird, I had access to drinking some of the best wines in the world, meeting those producers, and my my language, my vocabulary of uh, experiences just began to expand. And so, being at the Bird, my uh, my curiosity was peaked. I'm like, you know what? I think I want to make this also like a part of my experience. Uh, and at the same time, I had this um, idea growing for Gay Wine Club. And so um, I noticed more and more the deeper I got into like going to wine events and like uh, going to tastings. I didn't really see people who looked like me. I didn't really feel a queer presence. And uh, my mind always works to like fix a gap or to fill in the gap. And so uh, I don't know. I talked to Grant, Grant Reynolds about it. I'm like, yo, I think I want to do this. I want to start a gay wine club. He was super pumped up about it, like really supportive. And um, he helped me kind of just get uh, my foot in the door in terms of wine. And like, yeah, uh, I mean, there, there were a lot of like hiccups along the way, for sure. Um, I think wanting to stay true to the mission and wanting to continue to create community for people who aren't necessarily always invited into these spaces, um, more specifically like brown people and gender non-conforming people. Like I always wanted to make a space where like it was open for and like where people see themselves represented. But I think when a lot of people hear gay wine club, like a big problem was always, uh, people immediately thought it was like just for uh, gay white men, cis, like cis presenting gay white men. I'm like, no, my black ass is the person who runs it. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so I think that the challenge, um, and it didn't necessarily get ugly, but it was just like the people who I wanted to be there. Uh, like, of course, everybody's welcome, but the people who I like was really hoping would show up didn't necessarily always feel like it was for them, and I had to like do more work to make sure that people knew that it was for them too. Um, and then also a big challenge was doing everything myself. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a team. I didn't really have a team. Like, And to be clear, like I did have a lot of assistance in terms of uh, I was able to use the space at Charlie Bird. I was able to get help uh, accessing wine by being a, a member of the team there. But in terms of like promotion and like street team and like inviting people making sure that people showed up like hosting pouring the wine like i was doing that shit myself wow. so the challenge of like creating a business so to speak from the ground up and also like not really knowing what you're doing like learning along the way was hard is hard so uh it wasn't all perfect i did a lot and i accomplished a lot i'm really proud of what i've been able to do but it, yeah, it's been a rocky road and really yeah. humbling at times. And uh, yeah, I think the challenge is like being thrown into a thing and not knowing what the fuck you're doing. And expected to, because like other people, they hear the idea and they're like, oh yeah, that's phenomenal. Like they're excited to see what you're going to do. And then it's like, I have to turn something out, but I'm missing like three parts. So how do yeah. I do this? Right. You know? Uh, so it's, it was, I, I, if I could, succinctly say what the biggest challenge was it was uh creating high quality content and maintaining a sense of self-worth when you maybe were starting at a deficit yeah yeah so that's it i think it's uh it's always a struggle of establishing your self-worth and really like figuring out how to make shit happen 